In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a pot holder. I'm going to show you how to do the quilted pattern design, and also we're going to edge it with bias tape and top stitch, and also how to attach this little loop here. So let's get started. In order to make a pot holder, you're going to need the following items. You're going to need some fabric, and if you get a quarter of a yard, you'll probably get two pot holders out of that amount. So if just for one, I just have a, just a square that's big enough for my pattern here, and I need to cut out two of that. Um, you're going to need some cotton batting. You're going to need some um, fleece that you can get at the fabric store. It's actually heat resistant, so if you can't find it, ask somebody who works at the fabric store to direct you. These are both going to go inside the pot holder in order to uh, protect us from getting burned. The pattern, which you can download from our website. Scissors, sewing gauge, you're going to need a, um, cotton thread. Instead of the all-purpose, I would get the 100% cotton thread. This is also because um, it's going to be touching hot items coming out of the oven. Uh, pins and needles, you need a package of bias tape, and then some sort of fabric marking device, so chalk or fabric marker. So now we're going to move on to cutting out our pieces. So the first thing we need to do is cut out our pattern pieces. So I'm just doing um, enough to make one pot holder. So I have my fabric here that's going to be my pot holder here, and I have two pieces of it. I'm going to cut out two pieces of the main fabric of the pot holder, or if you wanted one side of the pot holder to be a different fabric, then you would do one of one fabric and then one of a contrasting fabric. But I'm going to do mine both the same. And then I'm going to cut one out of the cotton batting and make sure that it's cotton and not the polyester batting because we don't want to take any chances that anything's going to melt inside our pot holder if you're handling hot things. So one of this, one of this um, fleece that's heat resistant, and then two of the fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and pin my pattern, and then I'm going to cut out my pieces, and then we're going to move on to assembling our pot holder and starting to sew it together. So we now have our four pieces for our pot holder. We have two of our main fabric. You have one of the cotton batting, and then you have one of this other heat resistant fleece. If you have trouble finding this or you can't find this, you can just do a few layers of this batting instead of just doing the cotton batting up. But I would do at least three layers because I'm paranoid about getting burned. So now we're going to make a sandwich with all of these. So I'm going to move this aside. So here is going to be the bottom, one main piece. Then I'm going to get my cotton batting here and I'm going to put it over and try to line it up best I can so it's all even. Then I'm getting the heat resistant fleece. And I'm going to also line that up. And then the top of my pot holder. And then once they're all lined up, I'm going to pin around my edges here. Because the next step is I'm going to hand baste around the edge of my pot holder. And that's to kind of help keep everything lined up and not shift around as you're sewing. So that's why we're going to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and finish pinning this, and uh, then we'll switch over to the hand basting. Now that I have my pieces pinned together, I'm going to do a quick basting stitch around the edge of my pot holder. And all this is doing is just tacking the pieces together so they won't shift around. So the size of the stitches and how many you do and everything like that. It doesn't really matter because this stitch is eventually going to come out. You're just going to want to go around the whole thing. So it's just basically a running stitch. You come up from the bottom of the fabric and then you go down through the fabric. It's just up and down through the fabric. So I'm just going to go all the way around. And the next step is creating our quilted pattern on our pot holder. Now that the basting is done, I'm going to start drawing my lines to use as a guide so I can start just, um, creating the quilted look 
to my pot holder here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from one corner to the next. So I'm going to try to get this close to the center as possible. And I'm going to use my chalk here to draw a line. This is so I don't have to eyeball it. My stitch design will come out neater looking. Okay, so once I have my main line drawn, I'm then going to use my sewing gauge and I'm going to have it at the one inch mark here. So then I'm just going to draw a mark all along the one inch line and then I'm going to draw a line connecting these marks and then I'm going to repeat it until I get to the edge here. I'm also going to do the same on this side. So there's going to be lines going diagonally across the pot holder at one inch increments here. So I'm just going to continue doing this until I have all my lines drawn and then I'm going to take it to my machine and I'm going to stitch right along these lines here. So then it's going to come out with diagonal stitches and then we're going to take it from that point and we're going to draw lines going the other direction and that's what's going to give it, it the crisscross look. So I'm just going to finish here and then I'm going to take it to the machine. So here I've drawn my lines and you'll see that I went to about one inch away from the edge of my uh, pot holder here. You don't have to do it too close to the edge because we're going to have the bias tape that's going to cover parts of this. So the next step now is to take it over to the machine so we can start stitching along our chalk lines. I'm just going to do a regular stitch right along my chalk lines here. I'm going to start at one end. And I don't like starting too close to the end because sometimes the fabric gets stuck in the bottom of the machine here. So I'm starting a little ways in. I'm going to do a couple of back stitches. And remember, you don't have to go completely to the end because the bias tape is going to cover, cover that part up. Just going to slowly make our way down our chalk line. And I'm just going to do this for each line that I have. So now that I have my stitches done, I'm now going to draw my chalk lines going in the opposite direction. So all my lines are going this way, so now I'm going to crisscross. I put in my ruler right down the middle in the other corners and I'm going to draw a chalk line right along this line here. And just like I did with the other one, once I have my line, I'm then going to draw lines at every inch in one inch increments. So just like I did with the other one, I'm now just going to do regular stitches across my chalk line. And once I'm done doing this part, that'll complete our step for creating a quilted look to our pot holder. The next step after that, this is to then attach our bias tape to the edge of the pot holder. With the stitching done, you can now remove your basting stitch that you had around the edge. We're now going to attach our bias tape along the edge here. So it's this is um, double folded bias tape, so it's folded in half and then if you open it, it's folded on the sides here. You'll notice that one side is a little bit shorter than the other side. So I'm going to open up that side, the shorter side, and I'm going to pin this edge along with the edge of my pot holder here. The only thing is I'm just going to fold this towards the inside just a little bit because when this is showing um, in our completed pot holder we don't want to see a raw edge of the bias tape. So I'm just going to fold it just so it has a cleaner look and then I'm just going to line it up with the top and I kind of like to start somewhere in the middle not necessarily on the corner and I'm just going to pin right here and then I'm going to pin this all the way around my pot holder. When I get back to the beginning I'm just going to overlap 
the edge of my bias tape to the inside here. So it doesn't necessarily go right directly to the edge, it just overlaps it just a little bit. Again, that just gives it a cleaner look. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this all the way around. And we wanna keep this open because what we're gonna be doing is stitching right on the inside of this fold line right here. You'll see that your bias tape has the fold where it was folded. You're gonna stitch right in that ditch right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning this and then I'm gonna take it to the machine um, so we can start doing that stitching. So I've attached my bias tape all the way around the pot holder and here is the end. And as you can see, the end of it is overlapping with the beginning of the bias tape here. And you don't have to fold over this, um, the end of it here because it's gonna be hidden by this bias tape that's at the beginning here. So you just wanna keep that folded on the bottom and then you can keep it flat on top and it just overlaps like that. If you wanted to add a loop to your pot holder, what you would have to do is you would cut an extra piece of your bias tape, about six inches, and then stitch along the open edge of the bias tape, which I've already done here. So then I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm going to pin it to the corner of my pot holder here between the pot holder and this flap of bias tape. So I'm just gonna undo this. I'm gonna match up the edge of my loop with the edge of my pot holder here. So it's just gonna be stitched in there when you do the stitch of the bias tape. So now that it's in there, and I'm just going to repin my bias tape and now I'm ready to sew this down. Okay, so now we're ready to sew this. And again, you're gonna sew right in the inside of that crease there in your bias tape. And you're just gonna sew all the way around your pot holder. So I'm gonna start here. Get my pin in the way there, there we go. And do a couple of back stitches. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue stitching. And then once this is done, then we're gonna fold over this bias tape over the edge of our pot holder to finish up the pot holder. Now that the bias tape has been stitched to our pot holder, you're just gonna flip the bias tape so that it gets folded over and you have your middle fold line, that should be on the edge there. So I'm just gonna flip this over. So this is the back of it. And we're just gonna pin it so that our bias tape will lay nice and flat. And if you find in the corner, it kind of curves up like that. I would just trim just a little bit of this edge here, just so we can fold this bias tape over and it won't curve like that. So again, on our loop, we don't want our loop to stick like this, we want it to be like this. You're just going to, when you pin the spice tape down, pin your loop down like this. So then when we stitch right along the edge here, it'll stay more in this direction. You're also gonna do another couple of stitches right here at the top. This is so your loop will stay pointed outward. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pin my bias tape down and again, we're gonna stitch right along this edge here, and we're just gonna make sure that the back edge of our bias tape overlaps with our original stitch line we made in order to stitch this front part of the bias tape down because we wanna make sure that the back edge of our bias tape catches when we do our, stitch, our top stitching on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pin this down and then I'm gonna go to the machine so we can do our final top stitch and be done with our pot holder. Okay, so now we're just gonna go around the pot holder along the edge. And this is the top part of the pot holder. So if it's folded correctly in the back, this stitch should also catch the, the bias tape that's been folded over in the back. So after I'm done with this, I'm just gonna finish tacking down my loop 
and then I have a completed pop holder ready for use. So for my last step, I'm just going to again stitch over the, my loop in order to tack it down and it's probably going to be about a quarter of an inch away from my first top stitch line here. And I know this part is incredibly difficult to go through with your machine, at least it is for my machine. So if you need to change to a more heavy duty needle, that might be what's best. You just need to do a couple of stitches. Okay, to the edge and the back stitch. And then that's it. And we're done with our pot holder. So now that our top stitch is complete, here is a view of our completed pot holder with our little loop.